In this video, I'm going to talk about the insert into statement. If I have a table, for instance, my employee table, um, I want to add employees to that. I'm going to use the insert into statement. So right now, let me just run this to get a fresh table going. So there's several ways to use insert into. One is you say insert into, you list the table. And now you do not have to list the column names or specify the column names, but if you don't, that means you have to put a value in for every column, and you need to know the order of the columns so that you make sure you put in, um, a, an appropriate value into the column in the same order that they were created. So, for instance, I'm going to use the default word because I have an auto increment on my primary key. So default, first name, last name, email, salary, now notice salary does not have a single quote in front of it because it's a numeric value, or in this case a decimal data type, but everything else does, including dates, which I've put in as year, month, day. More commonly, you'll see people use the insert statement where they specify the um, columns that they want to add data to, and so you'll have to put in first name, last name, salary, or whatever the columns are, and then you type the word values, in which case you put in a, the corresponding value for the, for the column. So make sure that the values are in the same order as the columns that you've listed. The order of the columns listed does not have to match the order that was created. That's one of the benefits of being able to, to specify your columns, because you can specify them in any order, it doesn't matter. But just make sure that the values are in the same order as your specification. All right, in this next example, what if I want to add several employees to my um, employee table? Rather than retyping insert into, insert into every time, I can separate the values with a comma. So I can put in, I've defined my columns, or specified my columns. Now I'm putting in a first name, last name, and the salary, comma, parenthesis, and I can come up with a second person, comma, a third person, a fourth person. And so I can run this all at once and it will have inserted one, two, three, four people with one insert into statement. So let's talk about null and not null markers. If any of the value or columns in your create table requirements are, are not null, then when you insert into, you are going to have to include that column as part of the, of the columns you're um, specifying here, because you're not going to be allowed to insert first name, last name, and salary if you're requiring email. So you'll get an error saying, oh, email must be populated. Now conversely, up here I have an example where I don't list the column names, which means I have to populate every value. Well, what if I don't know the person's email, right? So I can't skip this column. So what I can do at that point is just add a null marker and so then it'll put null in for the email. Also if in my specification I had a default value up here um, for a particular hired date, of course I need to change this to a date time in order to do that date time data type, but anyway um, if I have a default value and I want to use that default value again on this example because I didn't specify my columns I need something for every column. I just want to use the default. Well, then I can use the word default right here. And that will use the default value for the um, that I've specified for this column, which so far I haven't really specified anything. But you get the idea. Sometimes I have to use the default word in my insert statement. One other bit of trickiness on the insert into statement. And that is, what if I have an employee that has an apostrophe in their name? Um, I'm making up an example of O'Leary. So if they spell their name capital O apostrophe and then O'Leary, something like that, well how do I enter that when that same apostrophe or single quote is what I use to specify a text string? So there's three ways you can what we call escape that character. And so one is use the backslash as an escape character. 
The other is using two single quotes or, this should be or, you can use double quotes and then use the single quote inside of that. So what that looks like, I'm going to insert into employee. I have specified just two columns because I don't want to type a lot. And there are the values. And so the first employee is going to be John with a single quote, single quote, comma, O'Leary. And I'm using a backslash right there. So O backslash. And that says to to uh, MySQL to go ahead and insert that quote as part of the data. It's not a single quote used to specify a string. All right, so that's one way. The other way is to use two. Now, that's not a double quote. That is single quote, single quote, two single quotes. So one acts as an escape to the other. And the third way is you can actually enter text strings using double quotes. So that is a double quote. So that's the shift and the quote symbol, shift quote, and then shift quote, and then I do it again there, which now allows me to use the single quote character inside the name. So if I run all of those in my employee table, hopefully my output, I got success, yes, and now let's select star so we can see each employee. So in each instance, no matter how I did it, whether I did it with a backslash as an escape character, a single quote as an escape character, basically you have two of them, or using double quotes, I'm able to get a single quote into the um, into the database. The you know this would be if you're doing book titles and you have, there's a contractions in the book title or the contraction in a description like don't or won't or whatever. You'll have to do something like this to get the contraction into the database. So the insert into statements, easy to use. Basically, I can add multiple people at once. I can specify the columns, or I can choose not to specify the columns, but then I have to have a value for every column.